In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to open and close a door in Unreal Engine 5. The door will open away from you no matter what side of the door you are on. So here I am inside of this project and before we start, if you want the same project as me, you can go ahead to the Unreal Engine Marketplace and search for Game Design and click on this free button. And this is the project that I'm using. So inside of here, I made a basic character and basic movement. So clicking on play, it's just a basic first person character that I'm running around as. So now let's go ahead and set up the door. If you're interested in in-depth game development courses, please visit my website, pixelhelmet.com, which you can also find in the description below. Here in the starter content props, I have this one, the door frame and the door. So let's make those into a blueprint before we can use them. So if I go back to the content folder, right click, blueprint class, and let's select actor and let's call this one BP door. Let's go ahead and open it up. And inside of here, first go to the viewport and let's set up the door. Over here in the components, click on add and search for static mesh. So static mesh is basically just a 3D model you can add. And I'm going to call this one door frame. I'm going to click up here, click add again, and search for static mesh here. And this one is going to be the door. So we have the frame and we have the door. Clicking on the frame first, you can click on this static mesh over here in the details panel. And I'm just going to search for door, and then I'm going to select the door frame. So now we have it, this is the door frame. And then I can go ahead and click on door, click over here again, search for door, and now add the door. So now what you need to do is align them together. You can uh, play around with the grid here with the snapping and move the door in place so it fits. I'm going to reduce the snapping. I'm going to move it just like this. Okay, so now this looks good. We have the door frame and we have the door. Very important if you have a custom model for the door, very important that here, uh, the pivot point needs to be in the middle of the door because later on you are going to rotate the door and this is how you open it and close it. So if, if the pivot point here is in the middle, it's going to rotate in a wrong way. So just make sure that if you have a custom model, it, the pivot point needs to be here on this side of the door so you can rotate it like this, opening and closing it. All right, so something else we need for the door. Let's click up here, click on add and search for collision and select this one called collision box. I'm going to make a new one. So this is the first one. I'm going to just call it box 01. Click on control D to duplicate it. This is box 02. So for box 01, I'm going to click on move it just in front of the door. So maybe go to the right view. It's a lot easier to see. I'm going to move it up, scale it up, just so that it fits with the door. And also scale it up this way. So I'm just going to put it in front of the door like this, and then making sure, go to the right view here, clicking on the front now, and making sure that it also scales correctly in the front view, just like this. So from the perspective view, this is what it looks like. The collision box we'll be using to open the door. So when the player goes inside of here, the player can open the door. So let's do the same thing with the other box. Let me go to the right view. All right, so I scaled this up. Let's go to the front view now. Again, scale it up as you like. Go to the perspective mode, see what it looks like. So now you need two collision boxes, one on this part of the door and one on the other side of the door. These collision boxes are used to determine at what side the door will open. Okay, so let's click on the first box. And if you go down here at the bottom, you have something called uncomponent begin overlap. So what happens when you begin overlapping with this collision box? What I want to do is I actually want to make a new variable, a rotation. Let's call this one door opening rotation. And this will be set depending on at which side we are standing on of the door and the door will open away from you. Let's take this door opening rotation here and set the Z value to minus 90. And the reason I'm doing this is if you go to the viewport and you click on the door, and you click on the rotation tool up here or clicking on the E on the keyboard, you can see here, this is the Z axis. You're rotating the door on the Z axis. This is why you need to uh, set the rotation on the Z axis. So if I set it to minus 90, the door will open like this if you're standing here. However, if I'm standing on the other side, so just like this, if I'm standing here, I need to set the rotation to 90 instead of minus 90. So this is what we're doing. Let's go back here. This is set to minus 90. 
And let's do the same thing. But before we do this, let's click on box one again. Go down here and we will be using this just in a bit. The on component end overlap. And let's click on box two. Click on begin overlap. Click on box two again. Click on end overlap. So for box two, let's just copy this here, paste it down here, and let's write 90 instead of minus 90. All right. And in the player, I want to make an event called can open door because when you are standing inside of this box, you can open the door. If you're not standing inside of it, you cannot open the door. So let's do this in the player. I'm going to open up the player here. And over here, let me right click and make a new custom event called can open door. And the only thing this event's going to need is two variables. The first one is called can open door. So it just asks, can you open the door or not? And the second one is the door variable. So I'm going to search for BP door. This is the blueprint I just made, selecting it here. Now I have it as a variable. So I'm going to right click this one, promote this to a variable, and let's drag it in here. The same thing with the door, right click and promote it to a variable, connect it over here. You can double click on these lines if you want to organize your code and make reroute nodes. Okay, so let's go back to the door and now let's go to the event graph. So now we need to communicate with this blueprint class because we need this open can open door event. And the way we communicate is we drag from here. Now we know this is the player that is overlapping with the box. We can say cast two. And what cast2 is, we're basically trying to communicate with this blueprint. So cast2, and then you write the name of the blueprint, BP player. So selecting it here, and let's go ahead and connect it. And as the BP player, you can now call this event called can open door. So as BP player, can open door, select the event. And let's set can open door to true because now we are inside of the box. And here it's asking you, what is the door reference? Let's drag from here and write self. So just a self reference because we are already coding inside of the door blueprint class. And down here, when we end overlapping with the box, let's just go ahead and drag from here and say cast to BP player, or you can just copy paste it up here. And let's drag and say can open door. And let's set this one to false. Now for the door, you don't have to plug in anything here because when you don't plug anything in, it will delete that reference. Okay, so down here, let's do the same. I'm just going to copy paste this up here and remember to connect the other actor to the object here. And the same thing down here, copy paste it, connect it, and can open door set to false. Okay, so over here, let's make a custom event in the door called open door. So make a custom event called open door. And here we're going to open the door when the player clicks on a button. So now let's go ahead and make that button. Let's go to uh, over here and right click, click on input and make an input action. I've already made an input mapping context. And if you want to know how to do this, please go ahead and look at my channel. I've made a video for this. So let's make one uh, input action called interact. Let's go ahead and uh, open up the mapping context. Let's click plus here and let's add that mapping context, the interact. And we're going to interact by clicking on this keyboard icon and clicking E on the keyboard. So I'm just going to click on E on my door to open it. And as the triggers, click here and select pressed because I just want to press my button one time to open the door. All right, let's save. Let's go to the player and I'm just going to move this down. Up here, I'm going to right click, search for IA Interact, the one I just made, and select this event. Now, before we can open the door, just make sure that you can open the door. Remember, we just made this blueprint, so we can drag this, can open door, drag from here, and write branch. So if it is true that we can open the door, then we want to continue with the code. If we can't open the, uh, the door, we don't want to do anything. So here, if you can open the door, if that is true here, Let's take this door reference. Let's right click and say convert to validated get. And just to make sure that this door reference is valid, then we want to go ahead and run the code else you will get bugs and errors. All right, so before I continue here, I just want to go back to my door here and I want to make a new variable down here called open door. So when we're opening the door, we're setting this Boolean. Let's right click, promote this to a variable. So this one we can set true or false, depending on if we need to open or close the door. So let's go back to the player and here for the door, we can now take this open 
door variable. So if this is true, which means the door is already open, let's write a branch here. So if the door is already open, we want to go ahead and close the door. So we want to take this one here, the open door. Let's drag from here and write open door and take this event. So if the door is already open, if this is already true, we can go ahead and close the door. So this is false. And if this is false, which means that the door is closed, then we can go ahead and open the door. Just make sure that you drag this and connect it to the target as well. All right, so this code is actually finished. So what we're doing here, we're checking, can I open the door or not? And we can do it whenever we're overlapping with these collision boxes. So if you can open the door, you're checking if this door uh, variable is valid. If it is, now we're checking, is this set to true? Which means the door is already open. If it's already open, we want to go ahead and close the door. If the door is not open, which means this is false, we want to go ahead and open the door. So this is a uh, very, very simple. Let's uh, put them together and let's go over to the door now. So before I continue my code here, I also want to make sure that the door is not currently opening because I don't want to spam my open and close door if the door is already opening. So let's go ahead and make a new variable and let's call this one door is currently moving. Let's change it into a Boolean and let's drag it out here. And just to make sure that it's not moving already, let's just write not Boolean. So here we're saying if the door is currently not moving, so if this one is false, and then you can write a branch, then we want to go ahead and open the door or close the door. So if the door is already moving, we don't really want to do anything. We want to wait for the door to open or close before we can interact with it. So over here, when we are ready to open the door, when it's not moving and we want to go ahead and close and open the door, let's drag this is currently moving and let's set it to true because now we are moving the door and it's going to open or close. And now over here, we need to ask, are we opening the door or are we closing the door? Let's drag from here and write a branch. So if this one is true, it means we are opening the door. So open door is true. We want to open the door. If open door is set to false over here from the player, then we want to go ahead and close the door. So to smoothly animate this door, like here, we want to make the rotation 90. So to smoothly open it like this, we need to use something called a timeline. So if you right click and search for timeline and click on add timeline, let's call this one door open animation. Let's double click on this timeline and inside of here we want to add a track and let's just add a simple float track. Inside of here I'm just going to call it alpha up here, doesn't really matter. And let's right click two times here, add a key to curve float and right click again and add another key. So the first one here, let's click on it. The time at time zero, this value will be zero. And for the next one at time one, so after one second, we want this value to be one and it's going to open smoothly from zero to one. So we're just making this smooth opening animation. So over here, the length, I'm just going to set it to one second. So the animation is just taking one second. If you want to open the door with two seconds, three seconds, you can do this as well. All right, so this was it for the timeline. Let's go back to the event graph and just make sure you're playing the animation from the beginning. This is when you open the door. However, when you close the door, we actually want to reverse the animation because we want, imagine right now the timeline plays and it finishes here. Reverse the animation just means that we're reversing it like this. It's going to go back to normal. And the simple thing we want to do, we want to take this door and drag from here and say set world rotation. We're basically just trying to change the rotation for this door and connect it to the update here. And in order to get that smooth movement with a timeline, right click here and say lerp. So we need to use lerp, which is linear interpretation. And we are going to use rotation. So we're working with rotations here. So I'm going to select this one, lerp rotator, and connect it here. So it's going to go from 0, 0, 0 in the rotation. And then we want it to rotate depending on whatever we set over here or over here. So let's drag this door opening rotation and plug it into here. And as for the alpha, we're going to go from zero to one. We're going to go from zero, which is this rotation here, 
to one, which is this rotation here. So going from zero to one, we're basically having a smooth animation from this rotation to this rotation. And when we finish the movement, remember to set this one to false because the door is not moving anymore. So I'm going to copy this and here in the finish, remember to set it to false so we can actually run this code again. All right, so let's make sure everything is working as it's supposed to. Let us click on play or actually let's just place the door first. So placing the door and just taking a look at where my uh, player start is, I'm just going to move my player start somewhere here. Click on play now, and I'm going to go to my door. I'm going to click on E, and then click on E again. You can see it opens and closes. Okay, there is a slide bug. You can see if I click E, and I go over here, the door switches to over there. So right now it's correct. However, if I walk whenever it's opening, it's going to open on the opposite direction, which is not correct. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm opening my BP door again. And the thing happening here is we're changing the door opening rotation. Remember when we overlap with the box, we're changing it from minus 90 to 90. So during this timeline update event, it's changing this variable, which then changes uh, the direction it goes to. So let's make this one static before we start the animation. So let's just drag this here and copy this door opening animation variable. And I'm going to right click and promote this to a variable called door opening rotation temp. So this is a temporary variable. Go ahead and connect it just like this. And we only want to set it whenever we're opening the door because when we are closing the door, it's going from that rotation, which it, it opened to and then it's going to go back to zero. All right, so that fixed it. So let's delete this one now and let's plug in the temporary one and let's go ahead and compile and click on play and test it again. So if I go over to the door, I click on E, it opens and closes. If I click on E and go over to the other side, it's not going to bug out just like that. So this is how you open and close a door away from you. I hope it will help you in your current project. And if you want to see more tutorials, please visit my channel, subscribe and hit the alert so you can see more useful tutorials like this or visit pixelhelmet.com for in-depth courses. I'll hope to see you in the next video.